Official access to Yarl's Wood is made through the Twin Woods Business Park, MK441FD. Anonymous industrial buildings, offices, units to let, stop signs and barriers, red and white, black and white. The entrance is manned and gated. At the front of the complex is a water tower that you would be forgiven for mistaking as a watchtower or a prison. It looms overhead and puts me on edge. The perimeter of the estate is marked by a tall chain link fence topped with barbs. Miles of green wire rise from the grass like an extension of the land. Reinforced 2.0 PVC chain link galvanized core, like the kind we clung to in the playground. Damaged links in the fence have been crudely repaired. Branches have grown into the fencing, wood swollen and bloated around wire, like a slow, unknowing rebellion. Nature's quiet and gradual reclaiming of space. Crops grow in the surrounding fields. Space for grazing animals, paddocks. Each rectangle of land is separated by spiky borders. Brambles, briar, midland hawthorn. Nearby woodland is scattered with bluebells. These flowers bloom in the spring so that they receive maximum sunlight before the leaves of the trees above cast them into shade. In Elizabethan times, they crushed the bulbs to starch ruffs and collars. Native English. Looking around, we see the landscape as imagined by the law. From the process of enclosure that consolidated land ownership, to the right to roam and the public footpaths laid out across the country. The physical space of the English countryside and our journeys through it are shaped and controlled by a long history of mapping, demarcating and claiming. The law and the landscape are irrevocably intertwined. Running alongside the perimeter is a public bridleway that leads us past the flat roof rectangles, past imposing towers and decommissioned wind tunnels, to the unassuming buildings at the back. Yarlswood Immigration Removal Centre. The Twin Woods site started life as part of the Royal Aircraft Establishment Bedford. Between 1946 and 1994, it was used for experimental aircraft development and aerodynamics research. Specially commissioned wind tunnels were used for studying the spinning characteristics of aircraft. Today, these are privately owned and used for various purposes including racing and body flight simulation. Wind speeds of up to 180 miles per hour support your whole body in mid-air, allowing you to fly. The facility windows only open enough to reach out a hand. Two decades after the last planes were tested at RAE Bedford, detainees were shuttled to their chartered flights, mass deportations that forced people back to their beginnings. The path of the bridleway is unsteady and craggy underfoot. The tracks from people and horses form craters and rivets in the earth that fill with little pools of rain, reflecting the sky, the move to grey. I think of the people who use the bridleway, of the journeys they make along the perimeter. Who are the people on either side of these fences? How are their lives different? The fields are deserted but for me. I look up to the windows and wonder if anyone sees me. Our lives run parallel to the chain link fence. How many borders separate us? 
The no man's land between fences is a gulf that separates the native and the alien. The border between citizen and alien is a fiction. Official access to Yarlswood is made through the exhaustion of asylum appeals. When we walk the perimeter of Yarlswood, we are walking the fine line between laws, and each step falls in rhythm with the passing of time. Fourteen days, two weeks, maximum detention without charge. The detention centre is a border zone, a territory whose identity is constantly shaped and reshaped, a space where laws collide, overlap, are tested and contested on a daily basis. Where native and alien meet, their new roles tried on, adjusted, thrown off. Every day the inhabitants of Yarlswood define and redefine the policies that shape the space. Each decision, to restrain, to confine, to touch, to resist. The word detainee conjures images of confinement, but it contains a multitude of identities. Immigrant, migrant, expat, refugee, citizen, alien, survivor, person. But in the ambiguous space of the removal centre, these terms slip and fold into one another. Multitudes are reduced to other and threat. The decision to confine becomes a matter of national rather than personal safety. Little sight nor sound escapes the walls of the immigration removal centre, and whilst the removal process interrupts the physical lives of the people detained, it also interrupts the process of asserting oneself as a political being, as a person who deserves the respect and protection of the law. Caught between citizenships. This interruption is an isolating tactic that is mirrored in the location of Yarl's Wood. Many new detainees arrive at night after spending hours in the backs of vans or in police cells. To make someone wait is to exert power over them. The landscape is a palimpsest, where every action is inscribed upon its surface. What will this place look like a thousand years from now? Fences, walls, concrete, overgrown, felled trees overrun with moss. Breathe in and breathe out. Too much time and too much history weigh down each branch.